Hi there. Um, this is going to be a the first time I've done one of these Chromecasts without Gabby here to hold my hand. So I hope I do okay with it. I just tried it and I it only went for 15 seconds, so I have to do it over again. So, uh, and I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to repeat myself, but maybe I can do a better job this time. Okay. Um, see, there's my baby picture. Okay. And here she is, bigger. <laughs> little Anne, Anne Renee, little Anne Renee. She's beautiful. Everyone's, that says babypictureproject.com, by the way. Everyone's baby picture, everyone's baby is beautiful originally. So, um, this is about the opposite uh, end of life that. I usually am very focused on the end of life, uh, through the crone and through getting older and the dis descent into death. But the ascent into life, and especially the beginnings of it, also fascinate me. Uh, because these are the two places, at the beginning and the end, when we are closest to something larger than ourselves. Um, in between, we tend to get wrapped up in the world. We tend to get wrapped up in whatever layers start to come onto us through our conditioning. And um, so uh, the original self, the original self is shown through the baby picture. There's some baby picture that you have that will show that and it, try to pick the one, try to find the one that is uh, not conditioned yet. And that can happen anytime between like six months and five years when the conditioning starts to become obvious. Okay, but let's go back and um, start looking a little bit earlier than that. Uh, as I say, I'm fascinated by these two ends of life. I'm also the kind of person, one of the things I'm meant to do here is to ignite activities that can even turn into movements, uh, which happened with the crone very quickly actually. Um, the Crone started Crone Chronicles, which lasted for 12 years, which then another magazine came for a few more years, plus the Crone's Council, which since 1992 has, is still going once a, once a year. And when I say movement, I don't mean anything big and huge. I mean something homeopathic that operates at a very deep level, but it's infecting everything. This is where I'm best utilized in this deep operation, you might say, to to create uh, movements which counteract the, the movements that are clear here on this planet now, uh, especially having to do with the way we treat human life with such alacrity we don't even care anymore. We kill babies when they're born. Uh, and we call that abortion. Um, infanticide is what some of us call it, which it is. Uh, certainly a viable baby should not be killed. Um, at any rate, um, you know, we've gone a long way away from recognizing the value of human life, the intrinsic value of every human life in lots of different kinds of ways. Uh, politically, uh, through war and peace, through war, not peace, just constant war. Um, through human trafficking, um, trafficking of babies, um, pedophilia, um, satanic ritual abuse. Um, there are such horrors that are coming to the surface now that we need everything that we can muster to counteract that kind of corruption of our original selves, which everybody, all of us are corrupt in terms of having been conditioned to not be ourselves, having been conditioned to pretend, having been conditioned to lie. Um, and to um, feel unworthy and to feel our lack of value. So this is a one way, this is one very simple way of returning to that value that you originally had uh, when you were born. Um, as an astrologer, I'm, I've long been fascinated with the birth chart, the chart that was there at the moment of your birth. That's always fascinated me. It always will fascinate me. And because it shows the original pattern that the soul chose to work with in this lifetime. And our job is to always work with those patterns 
in the most positive way that we can, or at least to look at the negativity that we show often also and integrate it within our being so that it's no longer negative. So naturally, then I would have been disposed to think about, you know, children and what they're like when they're little and how they get um, torqued over time. I don't think there's any such thing as natal, natal or innate uh, psycho, so psycho, psychopathy or um, sociopathy. I think that's learned. Um, I think we're all beautiful beings to begin with. Um, original sin is something they clamped down on us. It's not ours. Um, so anyway, uh, this project actually to start in on the project now, it actually began in 2006 because that's when I had a dream. I was in Taos, New Mexico, and I had a dream of a, um, I don't know what it was. All I know is that the mountain, it felt like the, the mountain that is right near Taos, which is a very sacred mountain to the Indians. Um, and in fact, other people are not even supposed to go on that mountain. Uh, it had spoken to me in the night, and now this sounds crazy. I've never had a mountain speak to me before, uh, but this one did. And um, it told me that I was supposed to start getting people in touch with their original selves uh, that was there when they were babies. And so how do I do that? I didn't know, but it felt like a, uh, a command. Um, just the way the dream was when I started Chrome Chronicles, there was this command coming from a raven saying, wake up, wake up, it's time, it's time. And I knew that was the crone, um, so the archetype. So the archetype in this case was a mountain. Um, not sure how to parse that, but in any case, I came back from Taos knowing that I had to do this. I didn't know when, uh, but there, it was there in me now. It was a seed. It was a seed idea that would have to grow over time, and I would find out when it was to begin, to actually begin. And interestingly enough, that was, so that was 2006. Um, did I say that? Yeah. In 2015, I, I remember the, the picture of the tiny child um, who was lying on a beach dead. He was one of the refugees in that first uh, refugee flow. And the picture went viral around the world. Uh, and that was the first sign. And then another sign was uh, uh, Burning Man. Burning Man, that year, the biggest sculpture there was a wire sculpture where two adults are sitting back to back, you know, separate, uh, alienated. But their babies, also made of wire, are inside reaching for each other. And to me, that is the Baby Picture Project. If you go on the babypictureproject.com, the website that I subsequently built for this project, um, you'll see that, that sculpture. Uh, and you'll see how perfect it is and why I decided, well, now is the time to get the Baby Picture Project going. Which we did with an official launch. And um, there were a dozen of us, a number of people from here, from Green Acres Village, and um, other friends of ours met at the Oakwood Center, which is a retreat center about three hours away. And uh, we had this planned event, which um, went off beautifully. I mean, we completely got into the feeling of each of us as a child, um, starting with telling stories about why we picked a certain baby picture, where we sat around that night, the first night. It was a 24-hour event. We sat around and we told stories about our own baby picture and why we picked that baby picture. And so everybody found out about something about each other on that very first night, some of us who didn't know each other otherwise. Then, I notice my baby picture is slightly askew, oh well. Then, um, the next day, we uh, had breakfast together and then we did a very special private ceremony where each of us was inducted into our original selves that we don't talk about because it was very sacred and very private. And then 
you know, we ended up doing play, um, play as our children, as our little kid selves, and then our little kid selves all went out together into the forest and built a tree house, or not a tree house, a, a house made of tree limbs. And then we had dinner together and that was the end, but it was just this wonderful time of truly each of us enjoying who we really are underneath and enjoying each other who each other is underneath. Uh, it really sponsored a whole different kind of connectedness than, than we normally have. So that was the launch. And then um, Brie Petty, who is a, an old pod mate here, um, started to create the website uh, with my help or my, um, my instigation, I should say. I wrote a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that's on there about the project. You might want to read it. Um, they, they, there's not that many stories on there. That's what I want. I want stories. I want people to send whatever they think is the baby picture that actually indicates who they really are. And that one is going to be before you were conditioned. Okay, so when was that? Find that picture. And so, what, so that's what we did. And so I would like to see each of us find their baby picture, send it into the website, <coughs> excuse me, and tell your story. Um, put it up. Um, another type of blog that would be very interesting a blog post uh, would be to tell what happens when you wear your baby picture out in public and because that can be a very interesting experience. My son Colin, I wrote up something that he told me about when he went out in public and um, uh, I just read it and just go on there and read it. Colin Cudmore, uh, you know, where's his baby picture out in public? Uh, I wear my baby picture out in public very rarely, but when I do, people just think it's my grandkid, and then I have to, and then I say, oh, what, a, they say, oh, it's your grandchild. I say, no, and then I turn around, and then you have the baby picture project showing up on the, on dot com, showing up on the other side of the, the, um, the t-shirt, and then they know what it is, and that has started some very interesting conversations, as you can imagine, because it's not like anything else. There's absolutely nothing in this world that reminds us of our original selves as we go around the world, as we go around to the bank, to the grocery store, to meet each other on the street. We're all pretending. We're all, um, you know, layered up with all our identities. And, um, and these days, those identities um, have, you know, lots, we have lots of vested interest in our own identities and Everybody else is supposed to call us by certain pronouns and so forth. I don't want to go into that, but uh, these identities are sheer bullshit. What's really underneath there is this gorgeous, beautiful, innocent self that each of us is when we came in here. So, at any rate, I would like to see people get this going again. Um, it really, we haven't had a blog post since 2016. It's 2020. It's time to do it, especially given what's going on in this culture, uh, this wanton disregard of human life. Okay, um, several ways to do it. I've had uh, several times. I've done groups of people that meet at night in the evening with their albums, their old albums, and they go through their albums together with other people uh, and tell stories and find the picture. So they find it as a group process, the picture that really best illustrates who they really are and then tell a story about that picture or who that kid is in that picture. And then hopefully make a blog post out of it. Um, hopefully make a blog post out of the group process that you went into. Um, my brother-in-law, John, did that with a group of his, um, a spiritual group that was meeting regularly, and they did that one evening. And he told me that afterwards, from that time on, he could never look at any of the individuals there that were there that night without seeing that original self that they really are. I mean, what an incredible thing to, to realize. We could, that could, it could have that kind of an effect to actually reveal the soul behind the, all the appearances. Um, 
uh, you know, I think about the, the ultimate would be um, people that are in disputes of some kind wearing their baby picture to talk about the dispute. I have a feeling that would just, um, you know, it takes all the layers off. It takes all the defenses away. We're vulnerable, all of us, each of us, originally vulnerable. And it shows in the baby picture. Um, now, to take it to the absolute nth degree would be what would happen if, you know, when they meet at a peace table in Afghanistan or North Korea or Iran or any of these places where America's been terrorizing the world and then they're terrorizing us back. And they come to the peace table, but everybody's wearing their baby picture. What would happen? We can't keep the same defenses up when we're wearing our baby pictures. And why would we? So that's what the Baby Picture Project's about. And I invite you to join me, to join us. Um, if anybody wants to become the administrator of that site, let me know. Um, uh, I, I want this to go. This, this is an incredible project. Um, it won't take that much, actually, once it's ready. And I think it's, it's starting to be ready given what's going down in the world. It's a time to have a correction to the way we've been treating each other. Thanks.